Hello everybody. What we're going to be doing here today is we're going to continue talking about addition and subtraction of vectors. Now you've already learned how to add and subtract vectors both geometrically and arithmetically. Um, our goal here is a little bit different. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying what we know about sums and differences of vectors to geometrical figures. All right, what your textbook calls geometrical proofs using vectors. All right, I throw in that word proof and you think, oh no. But I think you'll see that this is quite reasonable what we're getting ready to do. And let's go ahead and take a look at one of the problems that would be involved then. All right, simple triangle. This one is a simple looking picture. The next one will not be such a simple looking picture, but won't make it difficult to work with. What I've done is I've made a triangle out of some vectors. I've got a vector OA and I've got a vector OB. All right, and then i got a segment AB, which we can go from A to B. We can make a vector AB, or we can go from BA, or so forth. You'll see some different problems that we'll do right here. And what I'm telling you, then, is that vector OA is equal to A, and vector OB is equal to B. And what I want to do, then, is show that the vector that goes from B to A is equal to A minus B. And the way that we're going to accomplish that is simply this. If we're looking at vector BA, and we don't know anything about what its distance is or, or so forth, what we're going to have to do is use the vectors that we do know the distances for, and that would be this vector A and this vector B. And, you know, we're going to figure out how can we use those two vectors in order for us to find the length of this vector. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a little highlighting. If I wanted to go from B to A, yeah, I could go directly there, but I could also kind of go a roundabout way. Where I would start at B, go back across to O, and then go from O to A. Now, how does that help us? Well, the vector that we're trying to find goes directly from B to A, and so based on what we know about sums of vectors, that means it would be the resultant vector or the sum of adding this vector and this vector together. And when I use those pronouns, this and this, the first vector I was referring to happens to be the opposite of vector OB, doesn't it? And then the second vector that we're adding with that is vector OA. And as soon as I'm able to write vector BA in terms of vectors that I know the length of, all I've got to do is some simple substitutions in order to show that it's equal to the sum that I'm trying to show that it's equal to. All right, we know that vector OB is B units, so the opposite of B would be negative B. And then vector OA is A units, so we'll put plus A. And of course, negative B plus A is the same thing as A minus B. Kind of get the idea? All right, same picture, different proof. This time I want us to show that vector CB is equal to, well, you see what it's supposed to be equal to there? Negative one half times the difference of A and B. Now, I didn't point out in the previous problem, but it was written there, that the directions say that C is a midpoint of A, B. All right, so this point is exactly between points A and B. Now, I showed you for the last one how you tried to take the vector that you're trying to uh, find the length of and make the sum of two other vectors. Now, we're going to kind of modify that strategy here. Um, now that we have, we're have on part B of the problem, we can use our answer to part A to help us out, and that's going to be tremendously helpful. Now, let's get kind of to how that's going to work out. This vector CB, which of course is going in this direction, happens to be the opposite of vector BC. All right. Now, that might not seem like much right here, but I'm going to write it out just so I can explain why it's relevant. Now, why did I care to make that the opposite of vector BC? instead of just leaving it as vector CB. Well, the reason is this. A moment ago, we just found out what vector BA is equal to. 
Remember, we said that BA, vector BA, starting here and going there, is equal to A minus B. And that's helpful now, because isn't going from B to C half of the distance from B to A, because C is the midpoint? So now that I've said that vector CB is equal to the opposite of vector BC, I can say it's equal to negative one-half times vector BA. And then, since we know that vector BA is A minus B, that's where we're going to get our negative one-half times A minus B. All right, you follow so far? One more little proof to do with this picture. All right, we're going to find now vector OC. Now, that's not drawn in the picture, right? So I'm going to draw it. And this one will be a little bit easier than the last example. I hope you can tell that to get from O to C, you could do it a few different ways. You can go directly from O to C, and we're trying to figure out what that is. But you could also go from O to B, and then from B to C. So you could follow this path. Which means that vector OC is equal to the sum of vectors OB and BC. Which is great, because we know what both of those vectors are equal to, right? We know that vector OB is just equal to B. We know that vector BC is equal to one half times the difference of A and B. And then it's just a couple of steps to get our result looking the way that we want it to. All right, I'll let you follow the algebra that got me from here all the way down to there. Let's look at another example here with a more complicated looking picture. All right, in this picture it says that OABC is a parallelogram. So OABC, that's a parallelogram. And then it tells us that vector OA is once again equal to A, vector OB is once again equal to B. And then this is an interesting thing. It tells us the ratio of DC to CB is a 1 to 2 ratio, meaning that this is basically half of this distance right there. And we're going to start off by showing that vector AB right here is equal to the difference of B and A. Just like we did in the previous example, we're going to use the distances that we know in order to find the distance that we're asked for. All right, And so we're going to use vectors OA and OB to figure out the vector AB. And so we got to figure out how can you trace from A to B using those two vectors. And that would be along this path, of course. You would go the opposite way of vector OA, and then you would travel down vector OB. So then, vector AB equals the opposite of vector OA plus vector OB. And that's the opposite of A plus B, which of course is B minus A. Very good. Now, as I'm going through these examples, you've seen it enough that you ought to be able to try to figure some of these out on your own. And you're welcome to try them on your own as always, and then just check your answers with me to see if you did it right. That's what I prefer, in fact. Let's go on to the next one. All right, same picture again. This time we're going to try to find out what vector CO is equal to. Keep in mind that we have a parallelogram in the picture, and I think you'll be able to figure out the way that this one works if you're trying this one on your own already at this point. Now, if you're still with me, I'll go ahead and, and start talking about that strategy. Vector CO go in that direction, because this is a parallelogram, would have to be equal to vector BA, right? And why is that helpful? Well, vector BA is the opposite of what we just found in the previous example. We just found out what vector AB is equal to. And since CO is equal to the opposite of vector AB, that means it's equal to the opposite of B minus A which of course is A minus B. Good, let's try the next one. All right, this time we're gonna show that vector BD is equal to negative three halves A. Now first I wanna say that I, on the idea of why this works out. Remember again that we've got that parallelogram there and the opposite sides had to be congruent. And if we're going from right to left, that would mean that vector BC 
would be equal to the opposite of A. All right, but we've got to be going that direction for it to be the opposite of A because it's got to be the opposite of, of vector OA, right? And then we said there is this ratio of DC to CB where the ratio is 1 to 2, meaning that this distance is half of this distance, right? So if from B to C is negative A, then from C to D would be negative 1 half A. And again, the negative sign is because we're moving in the opposite direction of that original vector A that we had right there. And you know that negative A plus negative 1 half A is negative 3 halves A. Now that's selling you on why the proof is true, and then let me write out how we're going to use the previous vectors in order to show that that's true. Which is simply done this way. Alright, we made vector BD into the sum of two other vectors. And because of the parallelogram, we know that vector BC is equal to negative A. And because of the ratio, we know that vector CD is half of that. Whoops, didn't mean to put that there. And so there we've got our negative 3 halves A. Alright, I've got one more. We're going to do a fourth part to this particular one. Again, try it on your own first if you know what you're doing. Just to make sure we've got this idea completely down of how you use vectors with these geometric proofs. Alright, this time we're going to look at vector D A. Alright, vector D A. And what ought to happen is you ought to be able to find two vectors that we've already found, or the one of them will be an opposite actually, that we can use to find out what it would be to go directly from D to A. Right, we're going to add two other vectors together. And the two vectors that we ought to choose are these. We ought to use vector DB and vector BA. And that will be useful because we've already shown what the opposites of each of these two vectors are. Here are the results that we a couple of the results that we showed earlier, right? So here you see that 3 halves A is the opposite of what we had for vector BD, and the A minus B is the opposite of what we had for vector AB a moment ago. And just combine your light terms, 3 halves A plus A is 5 halves A, and your minus B, you're good to go. Those are geometric proofs using vectors. Pretty fun. Good luck with those guys. Thanks for watching.